And welcome to Paper Movies, the month of September. We talked about the X-Files Fight the Future novelization. Welcome back, guys. We've got the usual crew here. We've got Adam from Bryant's Nerd Pub, Jeremy from Stupid Chainsaw Productions, myself, Matthew from The Geeks Attic here, in the Paper Movies Novelization Book Club. You guys, you guys ready to talk about the X-Files? Sure. Sure. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to try to break this down simple, easy. Oh, everybody knows what the X-Files are, right? You got these FBI agents who dabble in paranormal activity, uh, sci-fi. Which, which paranormal activity? activity I guess, dude. Not so much ghosts, but the monsters, the aliens from outer space. Um, so I don't know where this takes place in the show, so we're not going to talk about that until later on. I'm just going to get the summary out of the way. We've got this these kids playing out in the middle of nowhere, somewhere in Texas, in this neighborhood that pops up, and a kid falls in a hole, and then the kids go get help, and then chaos breaks out because this big crew of helicopters, trucks show up with people in hazmat suits, and then they're pulling out firemen who tried to do rescues and all this stuff for this kid. But there's something down there in that hole, an ancient blob of sorts that the is black a virus. Oil. Say that again. It's the black oil, which is a recurring alien mutagen. Not mutagen. It's a. It's like a disease thing. It's a virus that takes over people. It's been a, a thing throughout X Files. Okay. And the the point that we get at in this book, um, well, in the movie that this is based on, is it. The uh, the men who've been experimenting with it and uh, trying to cover it up and preparing for the uh, inevitable alien invasion discover that the black oil has mutated and they cannot control it. Yep. And yep. this is and probably like a this, really bad thing. Yeah, there's a secret council that knows what's going on and they're preparing for this the arrival of an extraterrestrial species. Uh, they they've known about this virus. They're it's a really weird book. <laughs> That's why it, I can it say weird, it's, it, it's really weird for you two because you have never you you two have barely seen any X Files. Right. This, ha, this takes place mid series. Okay, so I, was, I was shocked that you chose this. Well, I didn't know that it was going to you know you had to know so much about the show to really understand which. I didn't feel like I needed to know much about the show to get what was happening because it had a, its story from beginning to end. I understood what was going on. But now that you tell me that there's this reoccurring thing that happens, that it kind of expands it all out. That's cool. There's I would like to know more about that. Things that uh, get some more depth in this novelization and well, the movie itself. Mm hmm. Um, but before we get into that, I want to say the Star Wars connection. Uh, okay. Elizabeth Hand writes this novel. And mm -hmm. Elizabeth Hand wrote several of the young Boba Fett novels that take oh. place during the Clone Wars. Interesting. She I... wrote better ones. Oh, okay. Uh, there, there was something I was... <laughs> I both read this book, like on page and I listened to the audio version of this book. And I have to say though, listening to the council meeting on audio was very entertaining because I liked hearing all the funny names. It's like the, the, uh, the elegant man or the, oh, yeah. the well-mannered man or the well-dressed man and everything. It's just yeah, like the well-manicured man. Yeah. The well-manicured man and everything. And I was just like, wow, this is like listening to what would happen if like, or like a James Bond mixed with a Dr. Seuss book, you know? <laughs> yeah. See, yeah, and they had the uh, the cigarette smoking man, which you know, we're, of course, we're going to be talking about the show mixed in with this because it is a novelization uh, with a movie based off of a show. So the cigarette smoking man isn't he in the show like helping? Oh, they all are. They this all are. Um, in fact, there is a show character death in the book that I won't spoil. But he's an integral part uh, in the middle of the series, and that was really shocking when that happens. I won't say who, but there's a a big character death. Okay, 
in this that I don't think you YouTube would have gotten since you didn't you haven't watched the show. Um, the cigarette smoking man and Mulder have a very complicated past, which is not brought up in this because we find out more about that in the following season. I got the hint though that it was kind of like a like Sherlock Holmes Moriarty or James Bond and Blofeld type thing. Well, yeah, there there is that now, but there there's a lot more to that. There's also oh, okay. more to what's the the fate of Mulder's sister. There's yeah, a, yeah, one of the many revelations of what happened to Mulder's sister that I th is finally ended in season seven when hmm. David Duchovny's like, I've had enough of this show and I'm leaving <laughs> for like a season and a half. Okay, so from the show, it's it, what we get in the book is it seems like the X Files have been closed for a while. Yes, and so the events that happen in, in this book reopen the X Files. Yes, and that's the point of the, that was the point of the movie. Okay, because th there was like season five to me is like the pinnacle season. The, that's when it just kept amping up and up, and then Fight the Future happens, which is awesome. It's an awesome spectacle compared to the show because uh, Matthew said many a time when ta we talk about X Files that X Files looks really corny and cheesy. I think they're fun, corny, and cheesy. Like, you know, yeah, kind no, of it's just a '90s TV show. They yeah. don't have the budget like they do for like Game of Thrones, where it, it had to be made on the cheap. It was made in Canada, oh. like to save costs. Um, but Fight the Future is an X Files episode. With a multi-million dollar budget. <laughs> and yeah. it's incredible to watch compared to the show, just on a technical level. I was going to say, I actually watched this film last night. And, really? Uh, yeah. And um, while watching it, I'm just like, it's. I'm just basically watching, it's like I was watching a two-hour feature of The X-Files. Like, yeah. So, uh, after you read the book, you watched the film, did everything line up basically exactly the same? Were there a lot of differences? Did the uh, author or new territory or basically just stick right on to uh, the script? On the most part, for the most part, it was the same. Um, but there was a couple of, uh, there were a couple of differences. Like, um, like I think it goes more into uh, Mulder's uh, sister than it does in the film. Yes. Because... I don't remember them very talking about Mulder's sister very much at all. And like during one of the, the, I think, what was it? The elegant man or something? Um, yes. Um, who, as I, as I recall, is he has dealings with Mulder before that. And he calls him Mr. Mulder. <laughs> That's like, he has the weirdest way of saying Mulder, but that could also be, there's another guy that was part of the council in season one named deep throat. That was literally his name. Uh, but he could have also talked that way, and I'm getting him mixed up because Mulder throughout the show has multiple like people that give him the insider information of like what's going on with the conspiracies. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like it lined up pretty well. Like you know how it started off with the Neanderthals, then it moved to Texas, and um, but yeah, I think the biggest difference I noticed is that like during that scene with the elegant man and Mulder, like they go more about. A Mulder's past and his father and his sister than it did in the film. So yeah. that was that, that was like the biggest change that I noticed. Now yeah. I'm trying to um, I'm trying to figure out if this is if either of you picked up on it that Mulder's father was part of this council. Really? No. Because I I, I mean it's pretty in the show that's a thing. Like he and the smoking man were best friends. I did not uh, so know that actually. This, uh, um, Sorry, I just spoiled like early Kurt, on. No, it's fine. The Kurt that would make sense because I know that there's this Kurtzwell, the guy that's feeding Mulder the information. Yeah, he said I knew your father, mm -hmm. so I guess that would make sense for them to be working together in that that council, yeah. which would spark a lot of that uh, interest for Mulder. Yeah, I uh, also, uh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh no, that's fine. Well, I was just gonna say, uh, I uh, honestly thought that like. Mulder's father was more like a Kurtzwell, just like um, he knew the truth, like because like of his intellect or something like that. And 
they saw him as a threat the same as they saw Mulder a threat. That's kind mm-hmm. of the, uh, the vibe I got from it. I didn't well, know he actually... Mulder's father's alive in the early seasons. Oh, he is? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> um, I've only seen a few episodes. Actually, but... I, I won't spoil, but like, you're on the right track. Of your thinking, because like with X Files, you need to just experience a lot of the twists and turns in it. Yeah, yeah. This this book had a lot of weird twists and stuff that uh-huh. happened in it. So I was kind of surprised too with uh, with that Kurtzwell at one point in the book. The cops are raiding his home for what was it child pornography? Yeah, yeah. They frame him for being. A- like, wow, they they went there. <laughs> Uh-huh. Which to me was a really dark thing. Is you kind of like, oh, this guy's a jerk. Yeah, and in, the, and in the film when I watched it last night, they were just like, he was just playing it off as like, oh, what they frame me for, like, you know, like for all the ch- the stuff with the kids thing again and everything, or like abuse against my patients or something like that. And it's like, yeah, like, it's like he knew, like, oh yeah, abuse my patients. It's disturbing. Uh, there was a, a joke too that I, I can't remember if how much difference there was uh, like time wise when the joke happened, but um, Scully, she's hungry. She wants a snack. So she goes into a vending machine. Uh, so, so Mulder goes into a vending machine room where the whole, like, you know, the bomb is it's in the vending machine. Yeah, well, we then, didn't explain what the catalyst is for Mulder. We haven't even talked about Scully. This right. is Mulder's partner. The uh, <laughs> part of X-Files. And, uh, how they're even brought into this right they're 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 looking in dallas at one of the fbi headquarters uh some building had a bomb threat and they were all the agents are swarming in one building and Mulder had this idea of like you know what we're gonna go look at a different building next door so him and his partner scully which she was not really happy about it she's like we're not supposed to be doing this we need to be out doing other things kind of complaining her point as a character right yeah and he's proving his like we got to be outside the box type situation (laughs) yeah so then he turns out to be right he goes to a vending machine where somebody uh, was walking out when he was walking in and then that person seals the door shut with something Mm -hmm. uh he he, he, uh he, uh, blow torches it shut yeah which was really quick and i don't know how Mulder didn't hear that going on but uh he's at the vending machine picking out something and it you know, doesn't work and he realizes oh this is a bomb so then he gets out of the building uh scully she evacuates everybody out building blows up and there was like a one of the guys um i can't remember what his name was that was going to try to defuse the bomb yeah and he just let it just he let it tick and then it blew up so i well, that guy was he part of this council no what I've got. I, I forgot exactly he how he ties. The, he's a character for the movie. He's, okay, I just I got, like got lost and confused again on like how does I, he I, get I tied into it to let it happen? Why? But he, I he may have been blackmailed or something or paid off. Well, I, he, I mean he dies with the building, so I wouldn't right. say he paid off. Yeah, I, I just can't remember <laughs> if it was made clear. They're covering up the thing in Texas. That was yeah. In the building, yeah. yep, and it's the mute, mutated form of black oil. And yeah. the well manicured man is like, I want my grandchildren to live in a, a safe world, and the only way to do that is to help Molder against the council's wishes because you know, cigarette smoking man wants Molder dead, yeah, or well, broken. And that, that, go ahead, sorry. It just depends on the day of the week. The joke that I was mentioning, it was when she's like, oh, I'm hungry. I need a snack. He's like, I got it. And then, the, you know, the building blows up. And then later on, oh, he's like, he's like next, next time, time you're, you're buying. Buying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, ooh, that's dark. <laughs> that's funny. I, the people, there were three people that died in the building, right? There's the kid and a couple firemen. I'm assuming they were dead already. Yes. Yes, like their and, body yeah, that's right. That's right. Or the bomb was to make it like, oh, well, they blew up to keep people from knowing that this virus killed them. This extraterrestrial virus. But it got, it did, the story to me was fun. It got weird in some parts. Um, but overall, I enjoyed the book. I, I thought the chemistry between Mulder and Scully was a little weird at first, but it developed into something better towards the middle. 
Yeah, I was gonna well, say. I, I, I was sorry. Gonna, no, no, that's fine. I was just gonna say, like the uh, the uh, romantic tension kind of caught me off guard because, like I said, I've only seen a few episodes and like, but based on like all the references or just like, like it, I never expected them to like be um, an item. Like, an item, yeah. I just kind of saw it as like a Sherlock Holmes and Watson type thing. So, um, so the the show, their relationship changes through the show, but the, the you have to understand the original show was a nine season show, um, and it just seems like they kind of that's the weakest point to me is like the romantic tension, for lack of a better term, um, to to the point where in season six they kind of go back on that and they kind of make fun of it a little bit. Uh, there's a great two-parter in there where Mulder and this uh, Area 51 agent uh, swap bodies. And the uh, Area 51 agent is like a middle-aged like pervert, like just a jerk. And he has this miserable uh, marriage with this obnoxious teenage daughter. And he's like not attractive at all. He's like this schlubby looking dude. But now he's in David to Company's body. It's one of my favorite two parters because he's just literally like ruining Mulder's life, and Mulder's just stuck in his ruined life. Oh man! See, you know, in this story too, when they Scully and Mulder go back to this little tiny Texas town where all this stuff happened, they covered their tra- like the, these villains covered their tracks. So, like up where that big cave was, they put a brand new playground, uh, some fake, I think it was fake grass or not. Yeah. Yeah. It was rollout grass. It's regular grass. Have you never seen that before? Uh, n- yes, I have. Uh, sorry. Yeah. I know what you're talking about. Um, like, like that, that was, it was just weird. Cause I'm just like, why would you put a playground over a, you know, to cover up, you know, an alien virus and everything? Like, you're like, why would you put children above that? Because yeah, <laughs> yeah, they know, were above before, I'm fine. Up until yeah. say what? Then, oh, yeah. Um, and then, like these kids, like they're, you know, Mulder's like, I think this is fresh. It's new. And then they see some kids riding bikes. Yeah. And like kids, and they're like, we ain't talking, mister. <laughs> it's like, you ain't the FBI. You look like traveling salesmen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was funny. And then they like take off driving to the middle of nowhere. Oh, the bee scene. Yes. But I thought that was like weird. It's like, oh, do they have enough gas to just drive nowhere? Because these kids yeah. revealed like, oh, yeah, there's some big tanker trucks went driving that way. So then Mulder and you know, Scully get in their car and they take off driving in the desert down some street forever. I think night, it, like the uh, nighttime approaches and they're still driving. Mm-hmm. It was just, that, that was weird to me. Like they not stop at a gas station. I wonder if they carry gas tanks in their cars, but I mean, it's a rental. Oh, well, never mind. <laughs> um, Good point. Yeah. Yes. It's a rental. I don't think it matters. But the bee scene is what matters. They go into this like government lab with the, these corn. They're, they're genetically enhanced corn for virus purposes, and they get attacked by bees. Yeah, genetically enhanced bees. Yeah, like whenever he like Mulder told, I don't know why it's just like moments like that in like movies or books. Whatever, like the main character looks at another character and says, uh, another main character and says, uh, "Hey man, run." And then something like like all this like chaos just happens like that. I don't know why that just gives me chills each time because uh, because then like we see all these bees come out of nowhere and I'm just like ah. like yeah the the cornfield the cornfield thing was pretty neat oh, to me part. just like, seeing some weird cornfield in the middle of a desert that just went on for miles apparently and I got weird t- I I don't understand the whole setup either with the. Uh, they were in the mountain, right? Behind a mountain, all this stuff was taking place. I can't remember. I thought they, they said like the, the train, a tr- they followed a train to where this stuff was going down because those big tanker trucks that the kids found or saw were on a train. Yes. Mm-hmm. And so they followed that train when it drove by in the middle of the night 
in the middle of nowhere. Which was convenient. Yes, through a mountain. And so they're like, we can't go in there because we don't know what it leads to. So they go around the mountain, like on foot, I think. I, and then I, it's when it opens up and they see a bunch of, like a large cornfield. There's some stuff. I need to watch the movie. I want to watch the movie. Chased by uh, helicopters, which is also a good scene. Yeah. yeah. yeah that, was, that was a pretty intense scene in the film. Yeah. Um, the uh, the bees though the thing the funny thing about those bees is like they they play a role later on in the story as well but they they're they're in uh, Washington D.C. weren't they where mm-hmm. they're, they're yeah so they they go to Texas these bees attack you know they they come down from the ceiling or come up from the boxes of the, to go spread this virus which we find out is a a tool to spread the virus out throughout the land. Um, and the bees like latch on to uh, Scully's jacket and get mm-hmm. caught in her hair or something. So it, it, I thought it was kind of humorous that they, uh, one of them gets stuck in her hair or something and makes a flight to Washington D.C. and then eventually stings her in the back of the back of the head or yeah. neck, which uh, kind of paralyzes her. Mm-hmm. So she can be put on the spaceship in Antarctica. Which that part weirded me out, to be honest with you. Uh, yeah, it's a little far fetched. That's that comes off as we had the budget to to film on a glacier. Yeah. And yeah. The, <laughs> it's not, the thing is, it's not the first time X Files has ended up on a glacier. <laughs> I was gonna say though, the uh the UFO effects kind of reminded me of like Man of Steel. <laughs> I still haven't oh, seen that yeah. one, but yeah, like, like the, w- 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 the reveal of it being a spaceship in the book, I think it just says like, and then the spaceship started to rise from the ground. I'm like, wait, wait, hold on. We're in a spaceship. <laughs> Cause he's like on the ground and like the snow kind of like, I guess kind of falls underneath him and steam like, starts. You to know, the skull. When you found out the pyramid was actually uh, a spaceship that traveled interdimensionally. It's like, it's not like a reveal, like, a, Oh, and then I realized there's a control, you know, something yeah, more right. elaborate. It's like, Oh yeah! By the way, we're on a spaceship. Like, yeah, it's just like you're reading it. It's just like okay, you're in uh, you're on you're in Antarctica. You're in the snow. You're in a stone. Then it's like meanwhile, somewhere else, almost instantly, you know. Yeah, it, which the whole transfer over to the Antarctica was a weird thing too for me. It was like all of a sudden, you're like you have, I don't remember exactly. So I'm, you know, so you have twelve hours to save her. Like now he's in trekking across the uh, the tundra of Antarctica in a well, snowmobile. I mean- are you familiar with uh, the lone gunmen that show up? The the three like nerdy dudes that that come see Mulder. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah they help from, him get out of the hospital. They're a bunch of computer hackers. Back when it was still like magical to hack a computer in the nineties. Yeah. <laughs> like the, their definition of like nineties nerd. Um, they they it, it's I I I got that they probably looked it up the longitude and latitude coordinates. Mm. I don't know how he got a helicopter to take him that far, but like, I don't think that's explained in the movie either. I don't know. Some of the things Elizabeth Hand does uh, leave a lot to be desired in this book. There's a lot of, oh, this is a thing now. I guess you could call it a jump cut of a, uh, of a book. Yeah. Can we, can we talk about the audio book and how bad it is? <laughs> that's how you actually took in the whole story, right? Well, so, I was actually wanting to mention the audio book too. That's that's so weird. Yeah, go ahead, Jeremy. Let me go on my rant. Let me go on my rant not right now because this audio book is horrendously red. <laughs> it is one of the worst red things I've ever come across, and Adam is very frozen right now. Oh yeah, he sure is. And the the irony is that I forgot to hit the record button on the uh, roadcaster, so we're in the same situation as last time, where someone has to give me the podcast after this. <laughs> All right, we'll do that. I was looking at the record button. I'm like, why is it flashing? I'm like, oh, I, I never ever hit the record button. Well, let me go on my rant. Yes, yes. Everyone is red in the same voice. Didn't even like try to lower pitch or anything. Not really. So that's very easily like you get confused if you're not paying attention. It was really annoying, especially when you, you're a delivery driver like I am, and you listen to ooh, Adam just got kicked from the stream. Oh, <laughs> and he messaged us on the Facebook. Uh oh. He says he'll come back. back. Anyway, 
<laughs> so yes, yeah, so you're, you're driving, you're trying to focus, but then someone says something and you're like, wait, you're who's like, talking? What are you talking about? And then the last five pages aren't even in the audio book. It cuts yes. off the paragraph. That was hilarious too. Cause I know you like you, somehow, I don't know how you caught wind of that beforehand, but you're, you're like, I because oh. this audio book is free on audible and I discovered why. Okay. So I wonder what the mix up was. If it was just like, um, Hey, here's the book. Oh, and here's like this other scene that we're not going to include on the audio version. Cause it's like a secret. What was it? Was it, it was just, okay. You have five pages. You said that were not on the audio book mm -hmm. and five. it was, I remember I had to send you the pictures. It just, yeah. It cuts after like a certain one paragraph. It just cuts off mm -hmm. somewhere I, in the wilderness. It, I think uh, exactly four hours. It's a really short book. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe someone messed up in editing or something. Yeah. I don't remember it being uh, like very long. I think I remember finishing that whole book in like a day. And then I'm just like, Oh, well, I still got these last few pages I got to read. And um yeah, the audio book, uh, I didn't really care for, like, how it was narrated. Like, I mean, the only thing, like I mentioned earlier, that I found humorous was just, like, the the reading of the scene with, like, the secret council and just, like, all the interesting names. That's basically it. But I, I had to have Ma I had to ask Matthew to screenshot, the, like, the last five pages and send them to me on Messenger. Yeah. So, well, I like, read it, and I'm like, oh, I should have just really tried harder to find this book in print. <laughs> it's a short book. I mean, it, to me, it read pretty fast. It, the novel is only uh, 219 pages. Me I don't think it read as fast as Raiders. Say that again? I don't think it read as fast as Raiders. That's true. Um, it may have read... Raiders may have read faster just because we already knew what was going to happen. But then again, I you knew. Happen. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. I was just like, me and Matthew didn't. But yeah. I've literally, so I just realized I'm the only one who's seen every movie we've done on paper movies now. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I need to, uh, I need to watch the fight the future and I need to rewatch Raiders, which the book we did last month. Um, so for the rate, I know this is probably going to be a little bit of a shorter um, episode, just because I mean, it, it's a short book. It's a fast book. It's based off of a TV show, like you said. It's just like com let's combine a couple episodes. Well, I mean, it's a it's a feature length film. Uh, you know, I, it just it felt short to me. When yeah, I, even when I read it, I was like, well, okay, a movie, like you know, like well, even watching the film, like I just kind of felt like. I just kind of felt like it was like, oh, well, this is just basically like a two-parter episode. Like, I mean, I yeah. it could easily, uh, like, like I wouldn't have guessed that this was like in theaters or something like that. Or like, I just kind of felt like, oh, it's just like a part one, part two that was just mixed yeah. together. Like, it made um, for TV movie or something. Yeah, something like that. With See, a the, budget. Yeah. This, uh, this novelization does have pictures included, which we had a discussion about pictures in novelizations recently about how they could be somewhat of a, a nuisance mm -hmm. when you're flipping through it's like oh it's in the middle of the conversation which this one was in the middle of a conversation uh this group of several pages i think it's like eight pages or so um but yeah i, I would read the book and then something would happen when i drop it i pick it up and i would turn to a uh, picture that i didn't want to see because it didn't make it that far into the story and that was a little bit disappointing uh, there's uh, the, the photo of Scully with that alien mucus things coming out of her mouth. I yeah. didn't want to, it was like, oh, oh yeah, well, I guess I'm gonna gonna the it was like, oh, wait, I guess I'm going to, uh, she's going to get caught in the book. And that was like right when I got started too. It was, I was like pretty bummed out that I saw that because I don't like being, I don't even like to read the back of a novel before I read it. I want to be spoiler free 100% usually when I go into these things. Right. Um, let's give our final thoughts on this, on this book. And we'll start um, with Adam before he cuts out again. Uh, like you want my, like my grade or like this, my overall like opinion, your grade and why? Uh, I 
B minus. Um, well, hold on. Let me. Actually, I'm going to say C plus. Actually, C plus because, um, like I said, uh, the book was very. You know, I didn't find it too exciting. Like, kind of like what Matthew said. It was just like it was just weird, and some of it was just like it just kind of like came up out of nowhere with no explanations. Just like, like oh yeah, a spaceship. You know. Uh, also, it was just like. And with the film, it was just like, also with the film, it was just like, it, there wasn't like this big cinematic factor about it. It was just like, like I could, like, I could have easily watched that and just thought that I was watching the TV show. But like, the only difference is I would have noticed is like, you know, like what Jeremy said, like it had more of a budget and you can see that it did have more of a budget in the film with some of the effects. But um, like I said, it was just, it was weird. And uh it wasn't horrible, but I just, uh, I think C plus is probably the highest I'll give this book. Matthew. I agree. I was actually thinking about this earlier tonight. I was like, hey, you know what? I didn't write down a, a grade for this book. And C plus is what I came to as well. I mean, it's not a horrible book. It's not a great book. Uh, the story's fine, but there were those weird things. Yeah. Oh, all of a sudden we're in, the middle of Antarctica driving a snowplow. Uh, then you get the, the weird stuff with the, you know, like I said, driving in the desert with no, the, the time went by really weird for me in the book. Mm -hmm. we're, we're over here. Now we're over here because we took a flight. Oh, I, well, Hey, I got a meeting in Washington, DC in two hours. I better go. And all of a sudden she's in DC, you know, walking in 15 minutes late to a meeting. Some of the stuff was just weird, but, um, the climax of the book was was decent. There, the things that were missing for me too were, were like with the villains. Uh, no, no depth to the characters of these villains. Uh, when Scully, or not Scully, but Mulder gets shot at one point, he calls an ambulance. Someone calls an ambulance. Yeah, I think I'm getting this mixed up. Scully gets shot, right? Scully, no, Mulder, gets sting. Mulder, right? And Mulder gets shot because he called an ambulance for Scully. And then, like, oh, the ambulance pulled up and took Scully away. And before the ambulance door shuts, he gets shot by this guy that he saw in an alley who has been, you know, working with the bad guys. I was like, okay, it would have been kind of more interesting if we would have uh, had more depth with these these bad guys. And how did they get a access to an ambulance and all this stuff so fast? It just got weird. You know what I mean? It uh, goes back to the whole time. Like, well, how did he know that? Scully's gonna get bit by a bee and to show up with an ambulance. Um, well, I have to judge this differently, being as I've seen all but the last season of this show mm -hmm. and I've seen both movies. Um, the everyone is already established in the TV show. That's kind of a detriment because this is not for casual, like I've never dealt with X Files before. It's not. You need to have some knowledge of what's going on to get like a grasp of what's like what's at stake and how these things go. With that being said, it's a very fast-paced movie, and Elizabeth Hand has really terrible pacing in this book. Like Matthew said, "Oh, we're here now. We're there now. We're there." It's like jump cuts in a book, mm -hmm. and like loss of time. It almost feels like the book is abridged. Yeah. And Never a good sign when your book's like feels abridged and that's like the final draft. Um, that's a good point. Also, it doesn't add enough, in my opinion, to warrant a movie novelization being good. Like we've talked about with pretty much every other thing we've reviewed, there's substantial things that are different, and that's what makes a movie novelization interesting to read. And with this, it's it's not. It's it's basically the same thing. Yeah, and it's yeah. like I, I want to do something a little bit different by picking a you know an X Files sci-fi yeah. weird I, I movie. You picking the good one, and we disagree. <laughs> I want to believe. Yeah, well, we, you know, and I, it's like since the pre we read the Predator. Yeah, we need to read some hits before we we start diving into garbage again. Yeah, yeah, uh, I, I agree. 
I don't I, think there's going to be a garbage oh, for the rest of the year. But. I give so, this uh, point 0.8 out of 5. Point 0.8 out of 5. Wow. It could have been better. Yeah. Um, it's a little frustrating how choppy it is, like yeah. to the point where it becomes a detriment. And just things aren't explained well. I know that there's supposed to be like some mystery behind things, like especially at the end. It's like, but you don't get any insight. Just like, uh, well, yeah. the thing that I found the most interesting about this story wasn't even in the actual movie. Like, it was about you know Mulder's sister, like the secret behind that. And it was only you can, that's the only thing that you can find different in the novelization. And I was yeah, like, that's you do find out that revelation in the show anyway. And then you find a, another re revelation later that I won't oh, spoil. Okay. There is a conclusion to that. Oh, okay. And it's, 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 it's very sad, but you think it's go It's one of those things. Well, it is like, you know, she was abducted when she was like five and was never seen again. Oh really? Wow. Yeah. yeah she's abducted by aliens. Oh, oh, okay. I think I remember hearing about something like that. Yeah, that that's found out early on, and that's that's like the whole reason that the X Files Mulder's in the X Files. Well, one of the reasons. Yeah, and that's another reason too. Well, I like to pick this one. Something completely different. It's a movie based off of a TV show that also has its own little expanded universe. Yeah, it does. It does. Mm -hmm. It has a contradictive expanded universe. I I would. That's what I would have imagined. That's like, well, because they started, uh, they had X Files comics were a big deal from IDW, and they made a season 10, and then season 10 came out. <laughs> it's very different. Hey, well, you know, franchises got to do what they got to do to keep things uh, in check. Mm. No. no. But <laughs> 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 almost. <laughs> Do you guys have anything else you want to add about uh, the X Files fight the future? No. You're gonna wrap no. it up. Um, yeah, I think was, I enjoy the experience, but you know, C plus experience. Yeah, so, it wasn't the Predator. I would like to read another X Files novel, though. That's not a novelization. Yeah, that's good. I at least you know, like I said, I mean, it hasn't you know turned me away from wanting to watch the whole series or at least most that's of it good. anyway. Good. I'm I'm still interested to watch it. So, yeah. Uh, but before we uh, wrap it up, um, we, we were wanting to announce something, and uh, hopefully, I can get through this whole announcement without freezing or losing internet connection. But if I do, one of you guys take over for me. <laughs> um, we're going to be doing a giveaway, and um. Uh, we're going to be posting soon uh, how you can partake in this or participate in this uh, giveaway. And the giveaway prize is a novelization of Spider-Man. You will get your own copy uh, to uh, be able to read it for the November stream. Yeah, November. Uh, rules and all that stuff will be laid out on the Facebook group. So if you're not on the Facebook group, go join it and look out for that announcement. Next month... We are going to be reading the official movie novelization for Halloween. Who's the, already finished it? The 2018 version. <laughs> so we got some cheaters uh, up in here reading things in advance. I'm going to take my time and enjoy this and finish it on October um, 31st. You better not. Just kidding. <laughs> we have to uh, movies before then. Yeah, I know. I'm going to be reading this probably tonight or... First thing tomorrow after everything else that happens within the day. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, but anyway, that does it for uh, this episode of Paper Movies. We covered The X Files Fight the Future by Chris Carter and uh, Elizabeth Hand. And Frank Spotnitz. And, yeah, Frank Spotnitz. That's an yeah, interesting name. Anyway. Guys, have a good night. Yeah. Have a good night, everyone. Thanks for joining us. And again, be sure to keep an eye out for the giveaway details so you can get your own copy of Spider-Man for November stream. Stay Gucci, people. <laughs> <laughs>